Hello YouTube. Yeah, this is not part of the video series I was doing about the projector, but this is more to describe the actual film path itself. Um, this particular film path is pretty intriguing only because it, it travels pretty far um, in comparison to a normal projector setup where you have a reel on the top paying out the film, a reel on the bottom taking up the film, and the projector mechanism is in between that and the distance is very short, usually inches. These runs are often sometimes feet, sometimes hundreds of feet. In this particular installation, the, the run is relatively short. It's only about 20 feet. It takes a bit of time for the film to travel off this platter here, go through the projector, and land back on the platter. It's about 22 seconds. And 35 millimeter is a nice size because you get large coils of film going on. Like this is most of what's left of six reels. I've started watching this. Um, but they get really big. This is probably about 80 pounds of film, something like that. Anyway, here's the film path. Here's where we enter the platter system payout head. It's called the payout head, or they call it the brain sometimes. But, uh, yeah, the film enters here. There's a switch right here. This is on and off. Uh, right now it's off. When it goes on, it spins this platter and, and pays film into this set of rollers here. Get this pair of rollers here. And then from there, it goes around the back of this guide roller. And then in between, get around here, in between this roller and this roller. This is a twisting roller. This roller is mounted on an angle so that the film twists from the time it leaves this roller to the time it gets to this roller the film twists and now you're heading in an upwards direction towards the platter tower. All right so now we are we are uh, at the exit roller for the payout. Now the film is heading in an upwards direction towards the intake in feed roller for the payout side of the tower. Now this roller is for this platter. There's three platters on this system, and each platter has a roller. This platter has the roller, that platter has the roller, and this platter has the roller. Okay, and <coughs> this will get you the angle to the platter tower. From there, it goes to the base roller for the payout, and this gives film a chance to uh, just get its distance from the platter it's running off of to the tower basically. We go from there to the payout exit roller on the tower, top of the tower. From there it would go anywhere. It could go over to the projector, it could go, in my case I'm going through a film cleaner goes through the film cleaner out the bottom and then we travel over to guide roller at the rear of the projector okay and then from there we twist come across and we come over to top end roller for the projector itself Okay, coming off the top end roller, we come down to the infeed roller, infeed guide roller. This is what aligns the film to the rest of the film path as it goes to the projector. Okay, then the next stop is the infeed sprocket. This is 
a sprocket that runs continuously um, in a, uh, to get the film running at 24 frames per second through the projector. I believe that runs at uh, 69 feet per minute, something like that. So that sprocket runs the film through at a constant rate. Now this, you can hardly see it. There we are. There we go. This is the top film loop right here. This little bubble of film. That's very important. You need to have that. Because as, I'm going to see if I can spin this here. As this spins, you can see the film builds up behind, but then the other sprocket pulls the film down one frame at a time. So as the film builds up, builds up a loop, and then sucks the film down. The film doesn't move through the gate constantly. I can film this. It stops and then jumps like that, okay? So the in-feed guide rover keeps the film going through at a constant feed, and then the loop takes care of the slack that's needed to run the film through the gate properly, okay? So here we have the gate. I'm gonna open that up just like that. Here's the film running through the gate. Now that we've messed that up. Okay, put that back. This is the aperture plate. This determines your um, viewing aspect ratio. Right now, it is set for widescreen or flat. This movie is a flat feature. Um, but you would switch that around to get from flat to cinemascope widescreen. Okay. And that would set up your opening of your aperture to correspond to which film you're running. After that, we have the most important piece of equipment on this entire projector. That is called the intermittent sprocket. This is the sprocket that starts and stops as you, the film runs through. I'm going to just demonstrate. I'll turn the knob here. You can see there it, every... 24 times a second, it just jumps the film through the gate like that. There. And right after that, you have the bottom film loop. This is the takes care of the same as the top film loop. It takes care of the slack required for the film to run through the gate at the bottom end of the gate. Okay, and after that, you have the pad roller that runs from runs with the intermittent sprocket to keep the film against the sprocket so it's pulled through properly. Another guide roller and then the, the bottom outfeed roller. This is the last roller before it exits the projector, pretty sure. We've got that little guide roller there, but that's off the damper. This guide roller gets the film aligned to go into the sound head. This is the sound drum or the sound head. You've got Adobe reader here for digital. You've got an analog reader here that reads the wavy lines on the side of the film, analog track. And the film goes around. It's very heavy. There's a big flywheel on that. It keeps it spinning at a very constant and even speed. This is not driven. This is pulled around by the film. Okay. And after that, we have... This is an oil damper. This is what takes the slack out of the film as it's coming off of the sound drum and keeps tension on the face of the film as it's going through the drum. Okay, this is the outfeed roller for the damper. This is the exit drive sprocket, the outfeed drive sprocket. This is the pad roller that holds the film in place on top of the sprocket. This is the last sprocket that leaves, that drives the full, pulls the film out of the projector at 24 frames per second, 69 feet a minute. And yes. And after that, I have my failsafe. This is what, whoops. This is what will shut the projector off 
and shut all systems down if the film stops moving through the projector for some reason. If the tower stops or whatever, if this thing detects any slack in the film, or if the film breaks, it shuts everything off. And I've wired it too. Shut pretty much everything off. Shuts the whole thing down. So, once the film leaves the projector, we will go down to an out feed guide roller and then go along underneath the projector to another guide roller which just bends the film to a 90 degree turn so that we can go back over to the platter tower. This is the in feed guide roller for the take up side of the tower. You can barely see it. I need to get some better light on this. You arrive back at the tower, at the base of the tower, to the in-feed guide roller side of the take-up. Okay, so from there we go through a device called a yo-yo. They call it a yo-yo, but it's a tensioning device. Okay, here, I can't, I can't get in behind this platter because I'm right up against the, the fireplace here. So what I want to do is I put a mirror in there, in the corner, so I can actually show you this device as it sits on the platter. So you've got, I don't even see anything here, two rollers on a plate. The plate travels up and down as the film gets taken through the system. Okay. Now the height of this plate controls this arm, okay, the, the arm controls the controller, and the controller controls the speed of the take-up platter. Okay, as that gets bigger, it wants to pull on that film faster, so it needs to know how fast to travel, and that's what this device does. As that plate gets ridden up that track, it, uh, controls the speed of the motor, okay? So, once you get past that device, tensioning device, we actually head to the in-feed portion of the take-up. Okay, we're at the other side of the tower now. This is where the film exits the tensioning device. Comes up, 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 right to the very top of the tower that roller, okay, and then that roller sets up for whatever platter you're going to exit out onto. Um, if it were the top platter, I would use the top two, would jump from one to the other, and then down to this roller, and then off to the platter. Each platter gets that roller at that position, so you got one there, one there, and one there, okay. We're exiting onto the middle platter, in this case. So our film goes down to that roller only. We don't jump across to the second one and then go over and down. We just go straight down to that roller. Okay, and then the film exits and goes on to the platter ring. So there you go. And then that whole trip takes about 22 seconds. Okay, so what I'll do now so I'll fire everything up and um, follow the film through its path um, just by watching.
Thanks for watching.